everything you want to achieve, every hope, every aspiration, every dream, everything you want to do within your organizations and within your department, it's all going to be with and through people. How many of you have clients who are great friends of yours? I would hope so. How many of you have friends that you work with? Raise your hands. Yeah. Except for him. He's like, no, you don't understand what office I work in. <laughs> of course you do. Of course you do. And the key is we know that those great relationships, those great business relationships that also happen to be your best friends, some of the people you care, some of the people you love, those individuals are, happen to be some of your best clients. How many people in here are in sales? Raise your hands. I hope it's, the answer is everybody, right? We're all in sales. How many people are, in sing, are single out here? Yeah, you're in sales too, okay? <laughs> We're all in sales. It's your job to move your relationships from here, stoic, static, foundational business relationships, to real, deep, personal, intimate relationships that are caring, that are there for each other, where you want to go that extra mile. That's the kind of stuff that success and joy is built off of, right? Right? You get into your own heads and you think that you got to be perfect. You think that people come to you because they're expecting so much from you. You know what? They want to trust you. The only differentiation in this marketplace, the only differentiation in financial services is you. It's not your products. Yes, they're clever. Yes, your performance is above average. Blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter. Because as soon as the next competitor walks in the door and talks to somebody, all they've got to say is one little thing. It's like, oh, well, Northwestern this. And then all of the credibility and the exceptional nature of who you are as a company and the brands that you go out the door. Because at the end of the day, it's the relationships that define your success. It's the relationships that define your product. You define your product. And it's not, it's not all the fancy stuff that goes on behind. It's this stuff. You're here because you want to improve yourselves. And you have aspirations, you have dreams, you have passions that you're trying to achieve. And you're here to get a jump start to that. Well, share that with people. What are your passions? What are the things that excite you? Where do you want to be in five to 10 years? There's nothing wrong, in an, particularly in an environment like this. No more small talk. How many people out of here have a child somewhere between the ages of one and a half and three? Raise your hands. There's nothing more passionate in your lives than that child right now. Watching that child blossom and grow, or grandchildren of that age, raise your hands. Same thing, same thing. Look at that, look at that smile on that man's face. George, I mean, you just lit up when I asked you about your grandson or daughter. Every one of you knows that when you reach out to the world and you share your passion, you're inviting people in to do the same with theirs. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to stand up and I'd like you to find somebody that you haven't met yet, or at least you don't know that well, and just talk. I don't want anybody to introduce themselves. I don't, you don't care about the division. I don't want you to know how many years you've been here. I just want you to talk about what are you passionate about. Spend two minutes having that conversation. Go ahead. We were looking for the perfect presenter to kickstart this networking event for America's best and brightest entrepreneurs, and you did just that. Within moments of taking the stage, you had all 800 of our CEOs on their feet and talking. It was a highlight of the event. John Coton, Editor-in-Chief, Inc. Magazine. Hello. Hello. She winked at me. How fantastic. Hello. She's fantastic. You want to come up and wave at everybody? Want to come up and wave at everybody? Come on. Yeah, she does. She wants to come up and wave at everybody. Look at this. You want to wave at everybody? There you go. <laughs> a pleasure. How could you not be passionate about that? What you just experienced, that, 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 you know, that fear and trepidation of actually being vulnerable, but then once you got going, the ease with which, and more importantly, the person sitting next to you, I guarantee you, how many of you started caring more for that person as they began to share I mean, you're prejudiced. Don't, don't raise your hands because some of you might not. <laughs> the point is, of course you do. That's human. The more you let your guards down, the more vulnerable you are, the more transparent that you are, the more, the more 
obvious it is that you're actually a person. The pinnacle of intimacy, and I'm gonna right now walk you through something called an intimacy pyramid. Every sales call, every relationship, whether it's personal or professional, has to make its way up to the top of the intimacy pyramid to be successful. And at the tip of the intimacy pyramid is deeper mutual understanding. Two people who really get each other. How many of you, if you ask yourselves really, how many people really understand me? How many people really get me? It's a gift, it's a blessing. We, 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 we spend our entire lives seeking that soulmate. Somebody that we can find who really truly understands us. The, guy, uh, the, the, the women are out there sitting there like, yes, he finally gets it. <laughs> The guys are like, let me write this down. <laughs> How many of you in here know somebody that you would have liked to have gotten to know better, but for whatever reason, that individual just had this wall around them and you just couldn't get through? How many of you ever known such a person? Raise your hand. Yeah. How many of you are married to that person? <laughs> Here's the advice, if I could be so precocious to give you advice. Here's the advice. Don't be that person. I guarantee all of us, there are people on our organizations who think we're that person. We know what that feels like. We know what it's like to want to, to need to, to aspire to, get closer to another individual. But that last mile of intimacy, that last sense of humanity and closeness, you just can't break through that person's shell. We shouldn't be that as leaders. If you're going to reach down, as Nick suggested, if you're going to bring people into you and allow you to be candored, candid and, and, to some sense, even foster confrontation that's healthy in the organization. You've got to create, and it's your obligation, a fertile environment around yourself that welcomes people in to be fully themselves, to be flawed, and to be vulnerable as we all are. From meal to meal, I live in fear of not having Splenda. You know? because that pink and that blue stuff just doesn't do it for me. The only joy in my life right now is a cup of coffee with that little yellow sweetener in it, all right? And I worry that my next meal, I'm gonna go to some place that's not gonna have Splenda. So you know what I started to do? And I, 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 this is embarrassing, but I noticed out that you have, I steal Splenda. <laughs> I stole your Splenda. I'm getting paid a good gig here, but I stole your Splenda. I'm the, I'm the little old woman from Palm Beach now that goes around with a... You know, but that's, that's a struggling mentality. It's, you know, it is what it is. Look, we all have this stuff, and, but, but here's the other issue. That same struggling mentality, I'm sure is stifling the growth of my company.